Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. Do you have a retro console that has a, an issue, whether it's video, sound, or even powering up, and it's not one of the standard problems that are out on the internet or things that you can find out about? Or worse yet, you know what's wrong, but the parts aren't available. Well, in today's video, we're gonna revisit the Atari Lynx that we put the Ben Venn screen in, and I'll put a link right here to that video. We found that the audio system had a couple burnout parts, and unfortunately, those parts were no longer available. So we took a non-standard method, get this old handheld up, up and running again. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench, we have a project that is a, a revisit, so to speak. This is the Atari Lynx that we did a while back that we put in the new uh, Ben Venn uh, solderless screen. And it looks absolutely fantastic. If we can get it to turn on, I'll show you. These boot real slow. There we go. Um, and you can see, I mean, this screen looks absolutely great. The problem is we've got no sound. Um, and uh, after talking with the owner, you know, he, he confirmed that there was, uh, he, he, he didn't know if there was sound, to be honest. Uh, he bought it with uh, sev several other systems and he knew he just wanted a Lynx. Um, so he grabbed it kind of uh, sight unseen. And of course it came straight to me for uh, an upgraded screen. So today, this is gonna be a little bit different than some of our other videos. We'll probably do some cuts and putting this one together where a lot of my other videos are, are highly unedited. But the reason is for this, we know there's no sound. We don't know why there's no sound. And since this is kind of an unusual system, it may take a while to find problems. So as I go through and I diagnose, some of it may get fiddly, some of it may get tedious, and I may edit out some of those sections. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start to get into this and uh, we'll see what we've got. Oh, and by the way, that it has been suggested that because um, we have power, the comm link and the headphones so close that there have been cases where people have put power, especially some of the older systems, straight into the headphone jack and burns out the op amp or the, the actual audio amplifier. Um, so because of that, and because some of the chips aren't available, I've picked up a small uh, two channel board amplifier that we may have to use, not sure yet, but I figured I'd have it on hand before we jumped into this project. Uh, but for now, let's get into this. Um, normally, you just have a few screws behind a couple rubber feet, but they're just off since we already knew there was a problem. And get the batteries out of her. I'll put them all aside. And, uh, you know, I showed you on my last video, the, the Lynx use these nice little flat cartridges. This is a second generation Lynx cartridge uh, with the little feet. The first ones were just flat, second had the feet, and the third ones are curved. All right, so I think all the screws were still out of this. So let's just, there we go. See what we can do. <laughs> all right, that was pretty simple. Okay, and let's tip this board back. If I recall, all of our connections are at the bottom. Yes, they are. Um, probably won't need to take this shield off, but we need full access to the top of this board. So we can get the battery box out. I think it might be a little easier. Let's 
There we go. The reason I didn't want to just pull at it, um, you can see here, there's uh, the ribbon for the um, front controls, and I did not want to put pressure on it. Okay, and our screen ribbon isn't going to allow us to fold it open completely. So we're not going to be able to have the screen while we attempt to work on this. Uh, okay. And there's not enough room on that bottom ribbon to get it over. All right. Sorry, this is not the cleanest of shots, but that's what we had to do. And I'll explain what we did in just a moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this one wire. Let's give us some room. Okay. And we will disconnect the speaker. Okay. So we're in it. So let's see, we're going to have to unsolder this board. And that means I'm also going to have to get to this to get to that. I'll be back in a few minutes after I get our board exposed. All right, I had to take a, a bit of a step back. Um, the shielding that was on the front that I was going to try to take off was a little more difficult uh, trying to get it off than, than expected. Um, as I started to desolder some of these pins, um, you know, you can see them here. Um, they were twisted. So I started thinking, well, I, I should check some things before I totally dig into this board. So what I did um, was I got that copper bit off the back. And also I needed to put it back into uh, the console so I could put the screen on, so I could tell if it was turning on or not. Because these old cartridges, sometimes they just don't read. And we need to know if we've got any audio. So right now it's hooked to the bench supply at eight and a half volts and it's turned on. So the nice thing about these old systems is we, we do have uh, schematics a lot of times. So as you can see here, we have an Atari Lynx 2 schematic. Now, if we start up here, we can see that we have the uh, one of the, the main processors. So we have, you know, button inputs and, and you know, processing and that kind of stuff. So we have audio signals here, left and right. And if we follow them down, the first thing they do is they come into an op amp or a pair of op amps actually. Um, U7, nope, it's all one. Okay, so it's U7 into the different channels inside that op amp. Um, and uh, you know it pulls the signal back and forth, which converts it into a left and right channel with a ground. From there, you can see here volume taper. Uh, also, um, you know, if, you, if you're sending a signal down, an AC signal for, for audio, you actually want to um, isolate any DC. So we have a few capacitors. And this is also why whenever we don't have volume, sometimes we've got bad capacitors. But, uh, you know, usually in something like this, the voltage is so low and the, the current's so low, these don't get damaged. So, and then it comes into our rheostat for our volume control. So here you can see volume taper, resistor with a point, resistor with a point, and they're tied together. From there, it comes, you know, our left and our right and our ground come out into this U12, um, which is this guy here. This is a single IC. It's a small amplifier IC. Uh, it's a headphone amplifier. So if we keep scrolling over, we can see that the left and the right channels and the ground come through some... Uh, inductors, some coils, and then out to the headphone jack. This particular IC 
is no longer available, um, which is why you know I wanted to pick up just some little audio amplifier board. Um, yeah, there's chips available, you know, like this little guy, but none of them pin out the same. None of them are going to have the same requirements with, uh, you know, resistors and caps and whatnot. So you know, sometimes just getting away from what's on the board, knowing it's not available is just the easiest solution. But if we keep going down, we can see our headphone jack here. And um, there's a ground and the two contacts for the actual headphones. And then you can see here, these arrows, and those are switches. So when you plug the headphone jack in, it pushes these up and it disconnects these, which those two wires come down to this next amplifier. Um, and a lot of times in these old systems, when you don't have sound, this is the actual problem. These contacts have gotten dirty or nasty or coated in who knows what, Cheeto dust and Coke. And then you're not passing signal. So the first thing you do when you don't have sound, you come in and you stick a headphone, you know, pair of earbuds in it and, and just see if you can get a signal off of them. And I've already done that. Um, and I know I didn't have signal up to this point. So I had a suspicion that that other IC was bad. Now, if we did have a signal there and no signal out here, we would check these connections. Uh, we just do it with a meter. A lot of times we can just clean them, but if not, replace the whole jack. And if that still doesn't work, then we replace the IC down here, this LM386, which, mind you, is actually still available. So, um, and you can see it, it comes out to the connector for uh, the speaker. Um, and, it, and it mixes the audio down for us. So, this system, I don't believe it was actually stereo. So we really only need one channel. And there's only one speaker in the system anyway. Um, so this, if we come back, it's highly unlikely that these op amps have, have burned out. It's, it's just not something that normally happens. And we know the system is booting and running. So this main chip, main processor is, is working. We know that. Um, here again, highly unlikely to just burn the audio channel out of the processor chip, unless if something really shorted it or you backfit power. But in that case, these old chips, it would have just wiped out the whole chip. So knowing that this is unlikely, the first thing I did is I pulled out a little pocket oscilloscope. And you know, I've got a big bench scope for when I really need to look at digital or high frequency stuff. Um, but these little pocket ones are great for picking around a board like this. Um, you know, this one is really in my, uh, house call bag, um, something with a few knobs on it. It's a little bit more convenient, but, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come here and see if we can get any kind of signal off of this section at all. Okay. So it's before the chip, before this first, uh, headphone amplifier and, uh, you know, before or after our, our main processor. So. First thing I'm going to do is let's set us down into the millivolt range because we don't know how how heavy that signal is actually going to be. Um, and then let's see, 20 second mils. I don't know. Let's just pick and see what we get. So I've got the clip set to a ground, and we're just going to come off here, which should be one of our audio channels. Oh, and there it is. We got something there. So let's. Go ahead and adjust this till we can see something clean. There we go. We'll come back up to here. Switch this to 50 millivolts. There we go. Okay. So you can see it here. Um, we do have an audio signal. This is gonna remember. This is uh, you know 8 bit. So it's beeps and boops. Um, voltages pouncing back and forth. Uh, let's see, we're showing a, about a 300 millivolt and changing frequency. We could do some more math with it and change our cursors and really figure out what we got, but it's unneeded. We can see that that's an audio signal. Okay. And we can see here, there's our other channel and we can see here. 
And I bet if we move our our volume knob, the amplitude's going to change from being big to being little. Yeah, and it does. So we have a good. So right now, you know, the system's on, and we have a good signal here. So if we come back to our schematic. That means we have audio coming out of here and through the rheostat and to this next chip. So now between that rheostat and this chip, or after this, you know, coming to the headphone jack, we have these coils and, and this. We already know there's nothing here. So let's go ahead and look at these coils real quick. And fortunate for us, they're right here. And we can come in and I'm just going to put these on so I don't touch something wrong. Um, we got nothing except static. Nothing but static. Nothing but static. And actually that one's a ground. You can see the little pins off of it. That one's a ground. Okay. So there we go. We have audio here, but we don't have audio here. And on our schematic, the only thing between those two parts, here's the coils, here's this, is this chip. Now we can come in and we can check IC20, or um, sorry, not IC, the capacitor 21 and 64. I'm guessing they're fine. But um, you know what? We'll check them anyway. So I think what we're gonna wind up doing with this, this uh, board um, since it's not easy to work on you know in pieces um, I think what I'm going to do is find a 5 volt source and I'm just going to run a wire up to this little amplifier and I'm going to wire up a speaker real quick we'll see what we get so uh, stick around and I'll be back all right thanks for uh, putting up with this um, like I said at the beginning you know this was going to be a lot of fiddling, a lot of messing around to try to figure out what's going on. And, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to do it, but I didn't want this video turning into a two hour video. So where are we? So last we looked at, we used the small oscilloscope and we, we found that, you know, we had audio coming off of our, our uh, rheostat, which is over here in our schematic. Okay. And, and like I said, this is the beauty of having schematics. And of course, all these big companies now are pushing you know, us to not be able to repair our own things. And, um, you know, there's a, a big fight right now for um, right to repair. And of course, a company like Atari that's been out of business forever, they don't care. But, so what, what have we done? We grabbed this single, um, you know, uh, audio amplifier module. And I grabbed a, a speaker for a, uh, this is actually for a Game Boy Pocket. And these, these come from Handheld Legend. Um, Matter of fact, in these little boards, I believe I, I might have picked them up from eBay or I might have picked them up from Amazon. I'll double check and I'll make some links down below uh, to, to all these parts. Matter of fact, I'll make a link to this little oscilloscope too. Um, so, what do we have? So we have this board and as you can see here, we needed a, uh, we have a speaker. We just took one of the channels, so we have positive and negative on our speaker. Then we have audio in, so we needed a signal and a ground, which we picked up the signal on this side of the rheostat, um, you know, just so we can uh, make a volume adjustment if need be, and a ground, which we pulled a common ground. So, and we know that this is a, a bus ground. Now the Lynx does have a separate, we can see it from the schematic, a separate uh, voltage in ground as a, uh, it's separate from the, the standard ground or the chassis ground. So then another uh, next thing we needed was five volts. Now the links and, and many of these handhelds, the internals run from five volts, um, even though that's nine volts in. in. This case we have it at eight and a half because we don't want to push the, the regulators you know, hard. So we needed five volts. So I took, where are we at here? So we, ha we have this green wire coming off our ground and I just grabbed a chassis ground, the same as the ground we pulled for audio. And if we look over here on our schematic, 
we can see on our LCD connector, pin number one and pin number two are five volts right here. Okay, no problem, right? So I just grab pin number two, soldered a wire for our five volt positive. So there we go. Now this is just very much a test bed. You know, obviously this isn't the finished bit, but you know, if this all works, there's a ton of room in this case. We're gonna wind up just, you know, double siding, taping this down somewhere inside and connecting up, uh, connecting our speaker. Um, actually, chances are what I will do is I'll pull apart, I'll have to look at uh, our schematic. Um, chances are, you know, like something like this. Well, we want our headphone jack to still work. But anyway, we'll come to that in a moment. So I have it wired up and we can turn on our power supply. We have voltage in. We can carefully pick this up so we don't want it to short out. And we can turn it on. See if it boots. It's booting. And it takes a second to get to a screen that's going to make some sound. So we're just giving it a minute. Sorry for that. Actually, that little guy gets, <laughs> that gets pretty loud. All right, so, you know what, that's great. That's absolutely great. So everything in front of this NJM 2073 chip is working. We're basically just pulling a signal off right right here at this solder joint. And we're bypassing everything. So what we need to do, I'm gonna have to take a thought on this. Since we know this chip is probably bad, it'd be best to lift it off the board, but I think it's underneath that cover. So I might just leave it alone. And what we might do is lift these guys off the board. or we might just pull these capacitors, C64 and C21. So we pull those, we can inject our signal back into uh, the board here. On the negative side, we can see the, the positive here. We can inject it on the negative side of this capacitor and it would actually hit this other audio amplifier. But knowing this is pretty loud through that little speaker, I don't know if it needs to be through a second audio amplifier. Which means we may cripple that too we might pull this one off the board and uh, just basically jump from here to here. But let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. I'm going to see where this chip is in perspective to what we're doing. And we'll make a decision. And I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that interruption. Um, I went ahead and cleaned up the wires. I did a little bit more work off camera than I was actually expecting to, but I'll tell you what, uh, what we wound up doing. So, you know, from earlier we, we found a good audio source and, um, you know, we know that our little amplifier board uh, was going to do the job. So, you know, we picked up five volts off of our LCD connector. We got a ground there for power. We've got our audio in straight from our uh, rheostat. And what I originally started to do is from the back of the headphone jack, um, there's these uh, inductors or, you know, little, little coils. And what I was going to do was we were going to, I was going to basically sever the connection here and here and feed our audio back in. But then I started looking closer at our board and, you know, this one's showing more or less taking this stereo signal, although it's just dual mono, um, and it goes into this single amplifier and then out to our speaker. Well, I found on the board that we actually had two of these LM386s. So I started digging through the board, and although this schematic is very close, it's not the, the same revision as this board. But it gave us a really good lead on, on what we should be looking for. So 
as I started uh, digging into it, the grounds and the way things are tied together were different. So what we wound up doing is essentially removing all of this from the system. So we severed the headphone jack out and we had to disconnect the speaker. Um, I was gonna try to leave it in, use a common ground and just power it. You know, uh, there's a test point here and I was just gonna feed it uh, from this capacitor. But we weren't able to. Um, the way the grounds are uh, between the power rail and the audio rail, this little uh, amplifier board did not like that and we got a ground loop. Um, so, like I was saying, we wound up having to open up the headphone jack and then just removing the speaker and essentially just wiring the, uh, the two parts directly to this amplifier. And we got rid of, uh, more or less, you know, all of this circuit and all of this circuit. And we just replaced it with this, uh, single board. So, you know, like I was saying, we, we wired it kind of direct. Um, you know, I made a two pin connector up for, uh, go into the head, uh, to the speaker with some heat shrink. And we'll just tuck this down. So this should all work. Uh, this is being held in place with a little uh, 3M double side. And just, you know, with a quick look, um, you know, none of that should be a problem. Um, there's a lot of open room here for our wires. There's, uh, you know, a lot of room up here um, for where that board sits. Um, you know, we've got the, the standoffs here. So, I mean, there's, there's a good quarter inch thickness there. So let's go ahead and just tuck these wires in. And um, yeah, we've got all the ribbon cables connected back up. The circuit board's sitting in place. I'll just make sure these aren't gonna be anywhere where they're gonna get grabbed on accident. And our standoffs are going to be here and here, so let's get this. Oh, you know what? Helps to put this battery tray back in. All right, how did that fit? It fit in just about like that. About like that. Just make sure I didn't. Pull that other connector out. It doesn't look like we did. Okay. All right, so and now it all snaps together. Let's put some batteries in this battery tray, not run it off the power supply. Okay, it looks like they're going this way. And these ones are gonna go this way. Now, I'm gonna put the door back on. It'll actually hold the bottom together. Okay. I guess it helps to put a cartridge in it. These uh, these won't power up without it. There we go. Let's see brightness. <laughs> All right. This one was a bit of a struggle, but there we go. We can finally uh, get this one back to uh, the customer and uh, they should be happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in it off camera. Um, but, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and um, you, you, you know, you give us a thumbs up and you decide to su subscribe. But uh, I knew this would be a little fiddly compared to some of my videos and some of the projects. But I just wanted to show you that there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat. So on these old systems, 
you know, if, if you got some section of it burned out, um, and of course my, uh, let's see the, not the turbo graphics, turbo express video, and, uh, we'll link it up there. Um, it shows how we bypassed an entire bad power system and, and video system. Um, but you know, there's a lot of these little boards out there for amplifiers or, or regulators or, or whatever that uh, can definitely be used and, and put to good good use in something like this. So anyway, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you on your next video. Thanks.